welcome. I mean, it's such a delight to have you here. I've been so excited to um, to uh, welcome you because I've used your products for quite a long time. And um, uh, ooh, where's she gone? And um, they really are very, very cleverly formulated. So um, can you tell us a little bit about your journey into skincare? Sure, sure. So um, lovely to meet you all, obviously virtually. Um, I'm Dr. Nita Sternum, as Victoria mentioned, and I have a clinic in London called Dewey Skincare. Um, that's actually where the inspiration behind the range we're going to mention today, Decree, came from. Um, but my background is I I'm a medical doctor, um, trained at Bristol Medical School and started off my career actually as a surgeon, but fell in love with the dermatology side of medicine very early on. Um, I was posted in a skin cancer unit and my job as the junior doctor was to do what was considered the less exciting job and that was to be stuck in clinical day examining patients and I became really kind of interested in dermatology as a specialism. I then went and completed postgraduate training at St Mary's Medical School in dermatology and have combined both my medicine and my dermatology as a dual specialism for the past now 17 years. Wow. So um, I'm a big believer in not just looking at the skin from the outside, but also looking at the skin from the inside as well. So what I mean by that is there's a really strong connection between your hormones, your gut health, and they really interlink with, interlink with your skin health as well. Yeah. Um, I, before doing my own range, I actually worked as a medical advisor for um, other kind of brands, the well-known brands on the market. Um, I've done kind of medical groups with Unilever brands, Procter & Gamble, um, Superdrug, and then eventually went on to do uh, my own uh, clinic line, which was called Nuri Skincare. I had no ambitions for it on the retail um, kind of arena, but I wanted to have something for my patients that I truly believed in. Because up until 2014, I worked in multiple dermatology clinics and we would stock up to 20 different brands and none of the doctors really had one brand that they really loved. Um, and we always felt a bit embarrassed that when we were recommending skincare routines, we were having to cherry pick a cleanser from one, a serum from another. Um, and it felt wrong that we couldn't find one brand we truly believed in. So when I launched my own clinic, I wanted to have a skincare line that I believed in um, I created Nui Skincare. We had 32 products, uh, very different categories, which you still see in, in skincare lines today. Um, so we had a range for anti-aging, a range for pigmentation, a range for acne, a range for men, a range for women. And what I found over the years of looking after my patient's skin, I was using the same active ingredients to get best results. So it became very, very clear. I didn't need to have so many different confusing cluttered categories and I could simplify decree uh, the, the skincare line down to something more um, concise which was an inspiration behind decree but then my patients were also the the main inspiration and for those who are watching who've been to see me at clinic at my clinic you'll know I'm obsessed with skincare I spend one hour with every single new patient and I get them to bring all their products in so I can look at what they're using on their skin I watch what they do in the morning in terms of the type of products they use, the order that they use them, how much they use, how they remove them, um, and then move on to their nighttime routine and their weekly routine. And that enables me to see often where they're going wrong with their skin. Um, when I did an audit of two years of my clinical practice, we found that 90% of the skin issues that I see and treat are often self-inflicted. And the number one cause is um, the choice of skincare. And the two big trends I've seen over the years, consistently for the past 18 years, are overusing products causing mayhem in our skin. So those that love skincare tend to have way too many products. And there tends to be no routine and no consistency. And they're kind of pick and mix style. What they're using on their skin each day, each week is really random. And the skin has its own built-in immune system. Every time you apply something to the surface, your immune, immune cells tune into that product and they try and work out whether it's a friend or an enemy and they decide whether to attack it or not. Um, the other trend that I've seen way too often is the obsession with exfoliation because we all want that clear, beautiful, flawless skin tone. Um, and in an attempt to achieve that, we often overdo those exfoliants. So whether that be mechanical exfoliation, with um, kind of scrubs and, and brushes and things, or whether it's kind of using more of the fruit acid, fruit enzymes, I was seeing 
double cleansing, fruit acid cleansers, fruit acid toners, followed by fruit acid serums, followed by masks and scrubs. And then when I go to assess my patient's skin, um, with our skin scanner, we'd see so much kind of inflammation and barrier compromise. So the skincare makes a massive difference. Sometimes I don't need to be a clever doctor. I just declutter the skincare back down to something much more simplified, much more structured and more suited to that person's skin type. And the skin is suddenly chilled and happy and it's relieved that it's not having to constantly chop and change um, kind of how it, how it kind of assesses the products you're using each day. And um, I often say to my patients, your skincare is a little bit like your breakfast, lunch and dinner for your skin. It is a medical organ. We sometimes forget that. It has important jobs. It protects our organs. It helps to regulate temperature. It makes hormones. If we don't feed it with the right nutrients, it won't be healthy. And our skin is a very unique organ because we can feed it in two ways. So I've got my little nerdy model here, which I always have in clinic. What we put onto the skin this way is one form of topical nutrition. And then what we have in our diet and supplements feeds the skin through our blood supply into the dermis. So when we are using skincare, it is relevant because it is one form of nutrition for your skin. Are you feeding your skin with junk food or are you giving it key essential nutrients? We know the skin needs to be healthy. And if you ever um, have a skin issue and you've been to a doctor for help, you'll know that one of the first things they'll prescribe is something topical. So if you put um, you know, a, a well-formulated product onto the surface in a topical form, that's the quickest way to get healing nutrients into the skin more effectively. So if you think about that when you're thinking about your skincare choice. So that's kind of a little whistle-stop tour of why I'm so um, obsessed with skincare and why I'm so into getting that bit right. Because if I don't get the foundations right with my patients, I don't want to waste your time with clinic treatments because this is your essential basic step to getting the best out of your skin. We know the skin prefers to have a consistent routine. We know the skin has its own kind of receptors for essential nutrients. So if we can get some of those into your routine, then we know our skin will be happier and healthier. We'll talk about that as we go through the, the declutter session. And we know that our skin has slightly different needs in the morning versus the night. So we'll talk about that in a bit more detail when we again look at the type of products we should be opting for at those key times of day. So Decree was inspired by all of that. And the final inspiration was when I was looking at my patients' uh, products on the table, I would see some things were barely used and other things were used to the point that they were cut open to get the very last drop. And I found that really, really interesting. So I'd ask my patients, why did you not use that product and why did you finish this one? And they would tell me that the sensorial aspect of a product, so is the packaging beautiful? Did it make you feel special when you're using it? Were the textures nice? Did my makeup go on well after, afterwards? What does it smell like? Does it smell like raw materials or that kind of the scientific kind of horrible, really sciencey smell that often you find with more clinical skincare? Or is it really heavily fragranced and off-putting? Um, so all of these things really mattered to my patients. So I went back to the drawing board and I wanted to create a doctor-led line that was as efficacious as my existing, but less cluttered. So I put the active ingredients of those 32 products into nine and launched Decree. So Decree is kind of your concise doctor-led skincare brand. We have multitasking, very hardworking products that I often call them strong but gentle. They're very strong. They have multiple actions and benefits for the skin, but they're very gentle. They won't leave your skin peeling um, and aggravated. And so it's a skincare routine that you can use consistently all year round. Brilliant. Thank you for that whistle, whistle stop tour. I mean, I think there is the tendency to, for us to um, these days with so many active ingredients and so many ingredient led products to try and to try and sort of self medicate when it comes to our skin. And I know you see when, when people come to your clinic and as you'll see in my routine, I'm sure you'll find a few a few things that you can you can weed out that might be affecting might be affecting my skin. Yeah, uh, this is always my favourite um, favorite part of the consultation, kind of looking at what people are using. Um, I can see your routine in the background and actually it doesn't look too bad. I have oh, good. some patients that bring in a whole suitcase oh, um, really? with them, and they literally open it onto the desk. And it's either one extreme or the other. It's either that, lots of products, too many products, or people that aren't using anything at all. Um, they may be using a bar of soap or face wipes. Um, and they're really using very minimal on the skin. And usually they're people that have tried lots of skincare and are scared of it because they've had bad reactions. So we often have two kind of patient groups, those that are nervous and don't know where to start. 
and those that are overdoing it. Yeah, I'd love everyone to put in the chat where you fall in that. Would you, have you got masses of stuff that you maybe never finish or are you a kind of one and done type person? Do, put, do let us know in the chat um, the sort of things that, that we might see in your bathroom shelf. Are they heaving or are they kind of, are they minimal? So uh, yeah, I'd be really keen to know and we can put some of those questions to Anita. So should we do my should we do my routine? Yeah. So where do we start when we do a declutter? And why what's the point of doing a declutter? As I mentioned before, when we overload our skin, when we don't have a consistent routine, our skin often rebels. So it wants a routine that is a consistent one. It wants to know what it's getting each day. There are certain sets we can switch around, and we'll talk about that. But let's talk about how we can get the essential basic routine um, and take your skin on that journey to, to kind of healthier skin. So the first thing we want to do is organize your skincare products into categories because it makes it much easier to declutter. Um, so I've actually gone through my collection and I often get like you given brands as well to try. Yeah. Um, so I put my skincare into categories. So I want you all to get your skincare and separate into cleansers, toners, serums, moisturizers, sunscreen, and then other. And the other will include products for the eye, the lips, any masks that you're using, any little devices that you might be using as well. Yeah, And that's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. This is really interesting as well, because this also helps to show you what your shopping habits are as well, because you'll often see, okay, you've got loads in one category and not very many in another. Why is that? Is that because you've not found the right product in the serum category and you've got 20? Um, why, why are you shopping that way? And it helps you to be more focused on your, on your shopping as well. Yeah. Um, what was really interesting when I laid out my products is I have hardly any serums and loads of sunscreens. Um, I don't know if you can see that's my sunscreen oh, shelf wow. all the way along well, there. That, that they say is the kind of, if you, don't, you, if you don't use anything else, you should use sunscreen. Yeah, exactly. And the thing with me is I'm always trying brands because I need to know um, what to recommend to um, my patients as well. And so I'm always trying brands, some I love, some I'm not such a fan of. But these are ones that have remained in the fan club. So um, oh, I'm sure people will recognize some of those. So in the chat, we've got some, uh, Gabriella's got lots of cleansers. David lo loves a device. Uh, Julie says, I've got lots of products, but the only time I don't finish something if, is if my skin hates it. Well, that's that's good. Obviously not, not wasting anything. Yeah, um, exactly. That can be good, but I have so many patients that they're using things that aren't helping their skin and they want to finish it because they've spent a lot of money on it. Um, and so that's one thing I get a lot. People who are using something, they're getting breakouts or their skin feels irritated and they say, but this cost me £200, so I have to finish yeah, it's it. Got to be good. Yes, yes. So, yeah, and I we know, feel because we, like we feel we, yeah, we feel like we overindulge and then we can't waste it. So we can talk a bit about that. A good sign is if you're using this product and your skin doesn't feel red and angry, it's not breaking out, it feels pretty happy, then great, great that you're finishing it. But if your skin is not behaving well, then that's the time to really kind of pause and do this reset and kind of get your skin skincare into a good place. So you've organized your products into your categories. Now it's time to do a bit of a culling session, unfortunately. Okay. So when we design, when we design skincare, when we formulate skincare, it's put through really kind of strict safety testing and you'll find that products are given a, an expiry date. So on your products, I want you to look at your expiry dates and anything that's gone past this expiry date needs to go in the bin. Because the reason for that is, first of all, you have microbial testing, which is looking at how well that the preservatives in a product are preventing it from getting contaminated with organisms, which will be unhealthy for your skin. And past that expiry date, that's when the test would have failed. Um, that time period. So you need to make sure you're using products that are, are in date. And a lot of people have had things on their shelf in their bathroom for years. I don't know if you have anything like that in your oh, collection. Yeah, I do have one, which we'll, we'll get to. So this one says, my moisturizer, for example, it says 12, it's not an actual date, it says 12 months. Is that Okay, one? that's the next thing. So on your, um, usually it should be on the primary or secondary packaging. It's a legal requirement um, to have an expiry right. date. I, yes, it's not, it's, I haven't got the box anymore. So. And, and we often just chuck the boxes in the bin straight away, don't we? Yes. So with all new purchases, um, you need to start paying attention. And I've got a little marker pen in my hands because this is what you need. Whenever you buy a new product, you get the product and you get the expiry date and you write it on the, on the bottle. Oh, so you wow. know when that product needs to be used by. 
Now the symbol that you just pointed out, Victoria, I don't know if you want to show everyone, oh, the no. open jar yeah. symbol is called the PO date. Now that's how long the product is safe to use once it's been opened. I see it's down, it's down here. So many of us will be using things that are way past their PO date. And again, that, that has been um, put through lots of safety tests to see how long it stays stable and how long it's safe and healthy to use for your skin in terms of contamination. So not only should you put the expiry date on your packaging, you should also write when you've opened it and when it needs to be used by using yeah. the PO date. So a little marker pen and you need to start kind of being a bit more um, organized with your skincare. And those things that are about to expire or um, the PO date is going to finish soon, put those at the front of your collection so you get through them first, so you don't waste them. Yeah, what a brilliant idea. Oh my gosh, yeah. you're so organized. I'm, you're so, like, you're this like is very you know, good skincare. So many people are using products that are not stable. The antioxidants will have oxidized. Um, they're not putting anything good onto the skin, potentially contaminating their skin with products that the preservatives are no longer protecting the formulation. And quite often it's expired products that are making the skin worse. So it's really, really important to pay attention to that. So a lot of people will, will already have reduced their skincare clutter by about 20 to 30 percent because anyone that loves skincare tends to hoard um, and tends to have things that they haven't used for a long time. After you've done that, the next step is to inspect your products particularly things that you open and close a lot and can dip your fingers into. And um, jars are very easily um, uh, kind of the biggest culprit for kind of products that are no longer um, good to use. So open your jars, things to look for. Do you see any moisture around the upper rim? Because if a product is contaminated, you often find it's a little bit, um, you sometimes even have bubbles of moisture at the top. So look for signs of, kind of moisture or bubbles. Um, on the lid, the lid's a good place to look, and then the upper rim. The next thing you want to do is look at the colour of the product. Has it changed from being a nice white colour to a bit of a grey, grimy looking right. product? Or does it still look like the original? Mm. The next thing is to look at, has it separated? Because if the, if the product is no longer stable, you'll often find the ingredients break apart. Particularly, you might see like an oil layer on the, on the surface. Any of those signs are signs that that product's probably passed it. Uh... Sometimes when you've got, when you've got, for example, one of these with a, you know, a, a pump, sometimes yeah. I find if I haven't used it for a bit, a sort of different colour liquid comes out and then a kind of yeah. clear. What... That shouldn't really happen with a new product. If it does, I would go back to the um, brand and, um, and report that because that should only really happen once the product's losing its stability. Yeah. So is that, um, if, I mean, yes, that would happen when I'd already opened it, but is that, yeah. it, does that mean, oh, it's fine as long as I get the clear, use the clear stuff, or is that a kind of bad sign? I, I would use that as a sign that that product isn't stable. Sometimes that happens if you've got really strong antioxidants and they haven't stabilized in the formulation. That's a problem when you use um, high levels of antioxidants. Yeah. Also, if you've got kind of oil, if you have emulsion, sometimes the, um, the emulsion can separate as well. And that's usually just where the product's been manufactured and not used for a long period of time or kept in a very hot environment. Um, so if you've had it kind of in a hot, you've taken it on holiday and it's been in a very hot, hot kind of environment that can speed up the rate that it separates. Right. Okay. So inspect the product. Serums are classics for, um, for not being stable if they've got high levels of antioxidants. So look at the serum color. Often things like vitamin C serums start off as a nice like straw color. And then if they oxidize, the air gets into them, the vitamin C no longer becomes active. In fact, it can actually cause um, sensitivity issues and even breakouts if it starts to oxidize. So if it's become like a dark orange or a dark brown color, that needs to go in the bin. Yeah. So that's a common like thing. Apple, I, like an apple goes brown. Exactly. When it, when it's, yeah. it's, a sign that the, it's a sign that the antioxidants have kind of gone off like an apple going off. Yeah. Um, and so that should go, unfortunately, go in the bin. It happens a lot with more high strength, clinical strength serums. And again, um, some brands that have say, um, great products that are a bit unstable, you keep them in the fridge, like you would keep your, your food items and it, you may get a bit more use out of it. Yeah, yeah. and also I guess the, the, the jar is important if it's in a, a jar, uh, like a, I've got one yeah. serum here, this is a peptide serum, this is in a clear bottle, but yeah. I think this is probably not got loads of antioxidants in. If it's in a clear bottle, then actually, um, basically, it's probably not got loads of actives in it. 
it's it's probably quite a kind of a gentle more of a conditioning yeah. um, product rather than a protective or reparative product um, the other thing to look at as well so you've inspected your products you've looked at things that have gone out of date you've cleared those off and then are there things that you haven't opened that you've had for a long time why haven't you used them yeah. is it something you're never going to use because that's yeah. something that you should get rid of give it to a family member or um you know even donate it to kind of beauty banks or one of the charities because if we haven't used it within six months seven months we're probably not going to use it that's what i generally see that it will just stay on the shelf and be replaced by the new the latest thing um arlene is saying oh no if she if she has an emulsion she usually gives it a shake if it separates is that is that okay or it that, can like it can that. temporarily inc increase the lifespan of the product, but in in a formulating world, we would say that's an unstable product. Okay. And it's a nightmare for formulators when that happens. We had a product when we were first developing it that kept separating. Um, it's a formulation issue as well. Okay. So it does happen. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I mean, you don't look like you've you've decluttered much, Victoria, because you're probably the perfect skincare well, i do have lots i mean i try to pick kind of one example of everything i use yeah. I mean, I, the thing is you know like when we're when you're in the beauty business it's quite hard to finish anything so yeah exactly yeah, and now i'm going to be writing with pen on the bottom exactly so we've done some done some basic steps now let's look at what does our skin actually need in a routine and that's the next step to decluttering so i like to break it down into morning and evening um so first of all I don't know how many of you out watching actually do do a morning cleanse. It's a controversial thing. Some yeah. people say, if I've cleansed the night before, why do I need to cleanse in the morning? Um, and I, over the years of looking after skin, I've definitely seen those that don't do a morning cleanse have got a lot more inflammation, um, bacteria overgrowth in the skin. They're more prone to breakouts. So overnight, your skin kind of does quite random things. Um, it's, it's anatomical and physiological needs change as well. So I can use my little nerdy model again to explain. Mm. So at night, our top layer, our epidermal barrier, randomly opens up. So our skin is more prone to water loss at night whilst we oh, sleep. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then deeper, we've got glands that produce our natural hydrating oil, our sebaceous glands. They start to slow down. They produce a much kind of gloopier, stickier, more concentrated oil. So our skin is more prone to water loss and we're not replacing that hydration very well whilst we sleep. We also know that we've got our melanocytes, which are like soldiers that sit along this layer here. They are our pigment protect, um, producing cells. They protect our skin from UV rays and blue light from pollution and any harmful things from kind of entering into the skin and damaging the DNA. And by the end of the day, they are knackered. They're like an umbrella that's blown inside out in the, in, in the wind. We need to give those a good kickstart and get them ready for the next day to protect your skin. Then you've got some great things going on. You've got some really hyperactive cells at night. Your fibroblasts, which make collagen and hyaluronic acid are raring to go. If you give them the right nutrition, the right building blocks, they will repair and build connective tissue whilst you sleep. Um, so we, we know that they're kind of, if we look at what the skin needs anatomically, um, physiologically, and adjust our skincare strategy to give it those nutrients, then we can get much more out of our skin routine. In the morning, our skin's job is very different. We want our skin to protect us from the environment. So when we step out of the house, we want a nice strong barrier. We want skin that's nice and hydrated and we want lots of antioxidants so we can start to kind of fight um, free radical damage and keep our skin protected. So my main kind of message is do not strip your barrier before you, at the start of your day. Unless you're on a medicated skincare routine for a condition like acne, you do not need to be doing double cleansing or really strong exfoliating um, steps in the morning. You want a nice, gentle cream or gel based cleanser, one that's really hydrating. I love looking for ingredients like glycerin, which is a natural humectant that draws moisture in. Nice kind of rose water, rose hip extract, aloe, condis crispus extract, so nice algae extracts in your cleanser. So do you have a nice cream or gel based well, cleanser for first the morning? Of all, hands up. I splash my face with water in the morning. That is my or sometimes I go in with a um, like a microfiber pad. Um, okay. I don't use a cleanser. So that's me told. So okay. what we what are we looking for? A gel cleanser? So cream or gel based cleanser yeah, to so start this, with. This is my cream or gel based cleanser. It's a new Corez 
organic Greek range detox toning emulsion cleanser. Okay. And it's really nice. It's quite light and milky. I'll show you. Oh, I haven't got there. Uh, Great, right. that looks lovely. That looks perfect. Just get so your eye makeup off as well. Just get everything off. Yeah, so exactly. So something like that. So this is our Decree Light Cleanse, which is a rose-based cream cleanser. Um, it's just, it looks a very similar consistency. So it's a nice, creamy, hydrating. So your morning cleanse should be there to kind of remove any remnants of overnight skincare, excess oil, debris. It really helps to prepare your skin for your next products as well. Um, Non-stripping, you don't need to double cleanse. Do one cleanse and then move on to your next step. Now, toners are controversial in the world of dermatology. Um, are you a toner fan or not? Um, ooh, when I remember, so I usually, so I would use, um, uh, I've got two here. I've got the gen, a gentle PHA exfoliant, which mm -hmm. is lactobionic acid and gluconolactone. So these are, for, um, and glycine bonded with azelaic acid. Okay. So that's, so, I find that nice and high, sort of quite watery and hydrating in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So toners, as I said, controversial. A lot of toners on the market I wouldn't touch for the morning because often they are heavily alcohol loaded and that, that's added. So you get a really nice refreshing degreasing feel when you use the product, but it's not going to be great for protecting your skin barrier function. So you want to have a water-based toner the way of telling is to look at the ingredient list. Yes, that looks I've also got this one, Skin Vinegar by Galileo. Yeah. Let's yeah. have a look, has it got alcohol? So, so you want to have aqua, deionized water, rose water. Um, yeah. That in the kind of the top kind of four ingredient yeah. list. Aqua, glycerin, alpha glucan, oligosaccharide, inulin, yeah. lactic acid. Right. Uh, okay water yeah I don't think it's got alcohol in yeah yeah so that's a good product so if you see anything ending in ol in the first four ingredients in your um product on the inky list on your toner then don't use it um not in the morning your morning toner should be hydrating why do we need a toner actually that's a good starting point isn't it so when you've done a cleanse even with a nice gentle cream or gel cleanser your skin can shift to, from becoming slightly acidic to slightly alkaline your skin is happiest when it's a pH of around 5.5, which is slightly acidic. So one of the jobs of the well-formulated uh, toner is to reset your pH back to a level that your skin is at its happiest. So we designed the Decree Preparatory Mist to be just that. So it's a mist toner. I wanted to reduce the wastage of using cotton pads as well with the toner. Yeah, so literally I mist so. over the face and neck. Um, now the ingredients, we have rose water, aloe, glycerin, um, we use an antioxidant blend, coenzyme Q10, orange cucumber, papaya, orange um, extract as well. So I always say if a toner's ingredient sounds good enough to eat and drink, it's probably a nice toner for your skin. So yeah. check water in the top few ingredients. Does it have alcohol in the top few ingredients? If it does, put that to one side. Is it packed full of lots of antioxidants? Yes, great probably a great toner. So we know from kind of more recent studies that when you do a good cleanse and toner step, your serums, which in my mind are one of the most important steps, will penetrate deeper and work more effectively. So it is a preparatory step to do a good cleanse and tone in the morning. But again, focusing on hydration and protection, not stripping. No, so no so, acids in the morning. No, you mentioned PHA. Now that's something I get asked yeah. about a lot. This one so is polyhydroxy really acids, I do like, but I prefer them more in the nighttime routine. And I'll come to that um when we do the so polyhydroxy acids are a great they fall under the alpha hydroxy acid family they are a gentler form of exfoliant so if you are prone to sensitivity it's quite a nice product but i find everyday use of that in the morning is often too drying um and i prefer to use that kind of product at night time okay. so we've got your cleanser and your toner sorted yeah now we're going to move on to your serum so what are you using in the morning at the moment serum wise right so i will sometimes use oh, well it will be a combination of so i've got my i've got my 30 percent vitamin c mm -hmm. i have got this this if i'm using this um beauty pie youth bomb which is a peptide based glow glow um serum which is really light i, I do really mm -hmm. like the texture of this um so I might use that first. So I try and go for the lighter textures first. Oops. Yeah. And then I might mix this niacinamide from La Roche-Posay. Yeah. Uh, with the vitamin C, or if I can't be bothered, I'll just use one or the other. Okay. 
So this is classic, somebody that understands what the skin needs. Actually, our skin has receptors for all of those ingredients. They are considered to be essential nutrients for your skin. And this is what historically a lot of people have done. They, they, they know the skin likes those ingredients in the morning. So they'll find a couple of products and they'll layer them. Now, this is where problems start to creep in. Because when you use brands and products that weren't designed and tested to go together, there's an increased risk of interaction, reactions with your skin, sensitivity. Sometimes you'll find products even neutralize each other out. So they might have a more, one might have a more of an acidic formulation, one might be more alkaline, one might have a water base, one might have an oil base. So actually, the, the modern way of looking at serums is to find your multitaskers. Really? And thankfully, there are lots of, particularly the clinical brands, are really moving in the direction of multitasking, one product that does everything. So um, I actually used to have four serums in my old range, and I put all of those ingredients into this one product, which is the Decree Protect Elixir. Now, some of the things you mentioned, so this has got your vitamin C. Now, this um, vitamin C is quite an interesting one because it's a great ingredient, really good for protecting your skin from the environmental aggressors, really good for brightening skin as well. Um, great anti-aging ingredient. But a lot of people struggle with vitamin C, particularly if they have rosacea or sensitive skin or breakouts. So it's looking at the type of vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is the most well used in skincare. But that's the one that people struggle with the most. Yeah, that's in uh, that's in my products. I yeah. I so, so my general advice is if you are prone to um, sensitive skin or any of those things I've just mentioned, look for vitamin C, a kind of a 10 percent dose and look for a type of vitamin C called a scorbyl glucoside. Now, that is a really clever form of vitamin C, because when it's applied to the skin, it's converted into ascorbic acid so you get all the benefits of ascorbic acid without the sensitivity yeah. so in this product we have the vitamin c we have the niacinamide we have the panthenol the b vitamins which are great for antioxidant protection boosting ceramide function protecting your skin we have coenzyme q10 another great ingredient for skincare we've got ferulic acid which is really important to look for in a vitamin c serum it helps to stabilize the um, the vitamin c as well so that's like my dream antioxidant blend to have in a day serum. But I also love peptides, which you yeah. have. And so I included peptides in this too. We have a copper peptide complex and we've blended it with zinc and magnesium, which act a bit like transporters, like postmen. They carry the antioxidants into your skin cells so your skin uses them more effectively. I'm obsessed with rose water. So this is in a rose water base. And we also have high molecular weight hyaluronic acid in every product in Decree. So it's kind of like your Uber serum. Yeah. So no need to layer. It's one really kind of concentrated product that gives, ticks all the boxes in terms of the key nutrients your skin needs at that time of day. Yeah. So I guess with a, a multitasking serum, you're not going to let it kind of molder in the cupboard and not exactly. use it. Exactly. Because if you just got one thing, you're going to use it up. Yeah, and, the uh, serums are the, the step I often see people really struggling with because uh, people will often have up to 10, 15 serums. They're kind of randomly using them, not quite sure I'm which order like to put yeah. them on. Um, and that's where people are often upsetting their skin because these are the products that are designed to be a bit more active. So they're the ones that can cause mayhem um, quite easily if it's not done well. So reduce the clutter, find one product that's hardworking and multitasking and stick with it because these serum ingredients are ones your skin needs consistently all year round. Those needs don't change as you go through the seasons. They are key core nutrients your skin needs to be at its optimal health. And then the final step after your serum in the core steps is your moisturizer. So what goes on in the day for you? So um, I, I tend to get, um, I'm, I'm on the dry side. My skin always feels a bit thirsty towards the end of the day. Okay. So this is my sort of liposomal moisturizer. It's yeah. not, it's not very, it's by Decorte. It's a, that's a Japanese brand. Yeah. It's quite, it's a bit scented for me. I don't tend to like scented stuff, but I do okay. like the texture of this. It's, well, you clearly like it because it's nearly empty, yeah, which is a good I sign. Coming back to that one. Yeah. So, um, so you tend to stick with one moisturizer in the morning. Yeah, yeah I yeah. do. Okay. So what I recommend, it's actually quite helpful to own two moisturizers. Because your skin's needs, this is the one step where you might want to switch it around according to um, your hormones, your stress levels, whether you've traveled, the climate, um, you know, hot days like this, you probably want something much lighter. And in the winter, maybe a thicker barrier. 
So I often say, find two moisturizers that you love, a light texture and a rich texture. Ideally, one that has quite similar active ingredients because you want your moisturizer to kind of seal all that goodness in and support that protective barrier. So you want ingredients that are going to be humectant to draw moisture in, occlusive to trap moisture in, and emollient ingredients to condition the skin so it feels really kind of plump and smooth and hydrated. So looking for a moisturizer that kind of does all of that. And that's actually why I designed um, these products. Because again, I had about six moisturizers in my old range. Um, and what became very clear is that actually people just needed to simplify it down to two steps. Mm. So these look exactly the same, don't they? We have um, peptide emollient veil and emollient veil plus, they're like brother and sister. Yeah. They contain the same core active ingredient. So I've included a botanical peptide blend for kind of signaling and firming and plumping the skin. We have hyaluronic acid for hydration and resveratrol, which is one of my favorite ingredients. If you like red wine, you'll know this ingredient. Um, it's a phenol antioxidant. It's great for um, pigment stabilizing as well. And then the point of difference is, I'll show you the difference in texture so we can maybe compare with the one we're using. So the lighter one, kind of really, really kind of light. I don't know if you yeah, can see that. Yeah. Um, and then the conditioning ingredients in this, we've added safflower and we've added squalane. And then for the richer one, we've kept exactly the same active ingredients. You're getting the same type of treatment for your skin, but we've taken away the safflower and added apricot kernel. This is a new product, so I just loaded up. So it's a much thicker product. You yeah. can see much thicker, it doesn't absorb straight away but both really, really silky and gorgeous. So this one has eight pot kernel, a high percentage of squalane, and then we've added candelilla, jojoba, and rice bran extract. So I'm saying the ingredients out loud so it's people kind of know these are things that are good to look yeah. for in their own skincare collection as well. Yeah, so, so um, I can see you've got, uh, from oils, you've got jojoba and squalane, but, and eight yeah. pot kernel, but nothing, they're all kind of quite skin identical, aren't they? Yeah, so you want things that are skin identical. If you're not sure where to start, squalane is my favourite one. It closely mimics your natural skin lipids. Um, lipids are like the mortar that hold our skin cells together, the, which are the bricks. They keep that top um, brick wall really, really healthy and strong. They also have antioxidant properties and they also have um, delivery benefits. They can help some of your other ingredients to penetrate a bit deeper as well. So squalane is like a a multitasking hero in my book and I love it. Right. So if you're not it's sure really what nice. kind of ingredient to look for, um, that's a really good one to, to go for. Um, so that's your moisturizer sources. Yeah. Um, then your sunscreen. So show me what you're using in the, the morning. Well, I have two things. Um, I've got, I do have a, uh, a foundation with SPF. It just happens to have SPF. I don't look for foundation with SPF because yeah. I know that it, it's, you can't put enough foundation on to get the SPF protection because I'd be just troweling it on and I'd look yes. at this. But um, so underneath that, I well, actually at the moment, I'm just using this. This is an Aven Factor 50 broad spectrum tinted cream. It's a chemical, not a mineral sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Um, but it's for dry and sensitive skin. So, you know, like sun cream sometimes smells of, you know, the yeah. beach. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. So I like right. don't smell of the beach, and it's a okay. kind of blurring effect. So it looks like a nice product, actually. Really nice. So, um, I, you're absolutely right. You shouldn't rely on your makeup to give you sunscreen protection. If it's in there, that happens to be a bonus. But I wouldn't use that as your um, your resource to protect your skin. Often, as you say, you need to apply a lot of makeup to provide a good level of protection. You would end up with layers and layers of it because you need to be applied through the day as well. So a good starting point, I actually am a big fan of tinted um, sunscreens because I think they also help to give you a bit of coverage as well. So it, for a lot of people, it takes away the need to use a BB cream or makeup as well. Um, and Factor 50 is a really good starting point for people because a lot of people don't use enough products. So if you're using a Factor 30, for example, and you're not using that kind of 10 pence pea size or two full finger lengths worth of product, you might actually only be getting a Factor 10 protection so the higher the factor the better and that's a great way to start your day and then a lot of people they start their day really well people are much better with sunscreens but what often they don't do is reapply it and when we look at formulations they often are unstable after a couple of hours after application so to really keep your protection going um, and to be most effective you need to be able to reapply it through the day and that's where people start to struggle now, clever formulators have now come up with great topper-upper products. 
I've got example of a couple. We've got the nice. Decree Day Shield, which is a factor 30, oh, okay. which is designed to um, go over your makeup to top up your sun's um, screen protection. Is it, um, what, is it a, a mist or? It's a mist. It's oh, a mineral yeah. only. So it's yeah. zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. I'll just wow. see here. Yeah. That... Um, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. It also contains rose water, rubium stem cell com complex, which helps to protect against blue light. It's got green tea, white tea, and red tea extract. So it's your anti-pollutant protection as well. Um, so it's kind of a nice multitasking product. Yeah. This is a product I've just been gifted and I've been using for the last few weeks. It's from Garnier. It's yeah. called Over Makeup Super UV, back to yeah. 50. And I have to say, I've been really impressed with it. So this is um, a nice product that, you know, I recommend yeah. have something that's designed to yeah. carry around in your bag and top up. And look for oh, extra sorry. ingredients like hyaluronic acid, things that are a bit more hydrating, so you're yeah. not getting this cakey layer on your skin as you yeah. go through the day. So do you use any top it top, top? I do. Up? I've got one by Bondi Sands, a spray okay. that looks very much like your Ambra Solaire one. Um, yes. yes, I do have that. I don't have it with me, but okay. um, that's a really good one. Great. So just to recap, we've got a nice hydrating morning cleanser, a water-based toner to rebalance our pH, a single Uber multitasking serum, and two moisturizers, a light and a rich texture, which you can switch in and out according to your skin's needs, according to the seasons, and your sunscreen, back to 50, find a good product that really works for you, that goes well with your makeup if you like to wear makeup. If you don't want to have to wear makeup too, find a tint of product, look for a factor 50, and then find a designated product to top up your, your protection through the day, okay? Now, the good news is, there's not a whole load of new products for nighttime, but there are certain things I do like to change. So tell me about your nighttime cleanse. Yeah, so my nighttime cleanse, I'd usually use something a bit richer. Actually, this, this Corez one is really good because it actually does take up makeup, take off okay. makeup and SPF. Yeah. Um, I'll often go in twice with that. I've got this, um, a, a thicker, this is Bloom Effects. This is a new brand that I've been trying it. So I like okay. a balm, I like a balm texture. This looks like quite like a gel, but it's an oil gel. Okay. Like a richer one for, for night. Yeah. Okay. So, um, again, you're quite good. Often I have, uh, a lot of my patients have loads of cleansers and it's kind of a bit random. Um, now, double cleansing is something I get asked about a lot. This is one very controversial um, step, which is very popular, but I often find people overdo their double cleanse. They literally have two kind of cleansers, different products, and they're taking off um, their makeup, but they're also really stripping their skin barrier. So my top tip is to start off with a micellar water. I'm currently using this one. This is from Bioderma. Um, nice product. Um, so use that to kind of take off the first layer of your makeup, your sunscreen, and then use something a little bit more hardcore. Um, I, I recommend this product from my range. This is the Decree Deep Cleanse. This contains loads of detoxifying and decongesting ingredients. So you're absolutely right. This is where you want something a little bit more kind of hard working. Um, this is where I do allow some exfoliants in your nighttime, in your skincare routine. So in this, we use lactic acid and salicylic acid. So superficially exfoliating AHA and a deeper acting BHA to kind of go into your pores and unblock them. We use bentonite and kaolin clay, which are like detoxifying magnets that suck, draw the impurities out of your pores. And then zinc and sulfur, which are anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial minerals. So the kind of texture you want, um, again, if you're prone to breakouts, I wouldn't use an oily balm cleanser. Yeah, your skin no, my, is quite... skin is, my skin is dry. Okay, it is, okay. So oil, oils feel really luxurious and really nourishing, but what they can do when you're using a lot of oil on your skin, that's not a skin identical oil. You can actually dry your skin out with it. Although it feels really nourishing with continued use, you can dry out your skin. So oil in some formulations can actually encourage water loss through the skin. It can also send a signal to your oil producing brand to say, oh, there's plenty of oil. You don't need me. I'll just like chill out and stop working. So yeah. you go through the cycle where your skin dries itself out and then your skin goes, oh my gosh, I'm dry. I need to overproduce oil. And it starts to go through this waxing and waning oil cycle dry, oily, dry, oily. So I'm not a fan for most skin types of using those oily balms. However, yeah. I haven't looked at that formulation. It might be great, but the majority of balms are not that skin friendly and they can cause this chaotic cycle. Okay for a spa day or kind of a once a week facial, yeah. but not for your everyday use. Yeah. So for, I mean, I like that because it feels like it's going deeper, but what you're saying is that yeah. the clays and the acids are probably, probably do Yeah, that. I mean, if you're going to choose, look for things like if you've got sensitive skin, lactic acid can be great because it's nice, gentle, exfoliating 
um, alpha hydroxy acid. So great for more sensitive skin. Salicylic acid is great if you are prone to breakouts and congestion. Pyruvic acid is another alpha keto acid, very good for congestion, breakout prone skin. Yeah. You mentioned PHA. That's also a good step to introduce a PHA product because it's got um, gentle exfoliating action. It's quite a large molecule, so it doesn't tend to cause sensitivity. And then, of course, fruit enzymes becoming massively popular in nighttime products. Things like papaya and pineapple enzymes are a great way. I do have, of, a, I have um, an enzyme peel here from Versa. Great. It's a, okay. That's a nice product. and PHA enzyme yeah. peel. Okay. Um, which is gentler than an acid, I think, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so this this is the texture of the nighttime cleanser that I use. It's kind of like a quite a creamy product still, but you apply it to dry skin and then you add water and it emulsifies your makeup okay. and oil. So it's strong, but it's gentle. It's not leaving your skin dry and tight. Yeah. You then move on to your toner. The yeah. same as the morning. You don't need a different toner. Okay. Um, and then you move on to your night serum. So what do you have at night time at the moment? I have got my uh, retinol so i always yep. i always use the retinol this is a retinol retinol and granactive retinoid serum yeah it's bright yellow because i think okay. retinoids are bright yellow yeah um and uh they don't say how strong that one is but it's a 2.5 percent complex overall so i don't okay do so actually that's a really nice combination of ingredients granactive retinoid in particular is one of my favorite retinoids it's a very versatile retinoid you can use it whether you have rosacea, acne, yeah, pigmentation, anti-aging. Um, yeah, so that's a great product to use. Um, if, you, if you're new to retinoids, then granactive retinoid is also a good starting point. You don't get peeling and redness and sun sensitivity with a granactive retinoid. Again, find, um, you're great, you're just using a singular night serum, but many people, this is where they really go to town and they layer on loads of different products. So in the, um, the, the decree one, I'll just say some of the ingredients because these are great ones to look for. Yeah. Remembering the um, physiological changes I mentioned happen at nighttime, you want to support your barrier hydration um, and prevent that water loss. So we've got rose water, we've got high molecular weight hyaluronic acid in this as well, and squalane, which we mentioned, that skin identical yeah. lipid. To help with those kind of hyperactive keratinocytes and fibroblasts, we've got granactive retinoid that's great for stimulating repair boosting rebuilding of connective tissue, breaking down damage. Retinoid is great for also getting those melanocytes, those pigment producing cells raring to go for the next day as well. Um, so it's a great multitasking active ingredient. Great if you're prone to poor congestion and breakouts as well. Helps to reduce overgrowth of C. acne's bacteria as well. Stem cells are great, plant-based stem cells. We use Swiss apple stem cells in this as well. This is where it's also quite good to add in things that are quite calming. So um, conjus crispus extract or any of the algae extracts are quite nice. And I also love peptides. So in this product, you get kind of all of that goodness in one. Again, yeah. I had five night serums in my old range and I put them into one product. So wow. look for those more multitasking products. I do like that product you have, but I would probably add in something like a squalane serum as well, just to kind of get your barrier. You're not really supporting your barrier function right. at that step. So yeah. that would be my, my kind of missing link for you would be to add something a little bit more. Um, maybe you have something that you could I use there. I have a moisturiser, which is the Organic Pharmacy Rose Diamond Face Cream. I feel it's, now you're going to tell me off this, but it's quite heavy. Yeah. It's, a, it's in, the, it's, I think it's their kind of heavy duty anti-ager. Um, but I wear it because I know it costs a fortune. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it looks a bit grimy as well from where I'm standing. <laughs> Yeah, that might be one that needs to go in the bin, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're actually, okay. you know, there you go. Yeah, well, you've clearly enjoyed it and your skin is beautiful. So, again, listen to what your skin's telling you. But, you know, in terms of your nighttime moisturizer, the qualities are similar to what you've used in the daytime. You want that combination of humectants to draw moisture in, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, great to look for in your moisturizer. You want something that's going to have emollient properties, so your squalane, your jojoba, your apricot canal, all of those things are really nice conditioning, non-pore clogging ingredients to look yeah. for as well. So often a thicker barrier at night time is quite good because as I mentioned, the epidermal barrier is weaker at night. So you want to have something that's going to restore yeah. that. So that's a great product in the, in the texture. I yeah. need to look at the ingredient list to tell you whether I love it or not. Yeah. But I do love peptides in the nighttime moisturiser as well. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, we've got a couple of questions about eye cream. And, and say if you wanted to treat 
puffy eyes. Um, mm -hmm. um, Jackie's saying she's got hereditary puffy eyes and dark circles. When would be the moment in your skincare routine to address that? Okay, well, in my old range, again, I keep referring to that, I used to have an eye cream, um, and you often put that on before you do your kind of face moisturizer. But what I found is when I was doing my research into eye products is often the ingredient list were almost identical to the brand's moisturizer. So I wanted to create one less step for people to worry about. So when I designed Decree, I made sure that the serums and the moisturizers were ocular tested and safe for the eye area too. And lots of brands are starting to do that too. So if you want a multitasking product that you can use on the eyes and the lips too, then that's one less product to worry about. In terms of ingredients that are great for the eyes, you want things that are going to hydrate, they're going to support barrier functions. So ceramides are good to look for, peptides, nice hydrating hyaluronic acid, um, caffeine can be quite good for de-stressing and de-puffing tired eyes, vitamin K and arnica, nice ingredients to look for in an eye cream as well. The thing chamomile also quite calming and soothing. So nice kind of calming, hydrating ingredients. Yeah. Would you say you needed a night cream or if, um, sorry, an eye cream, or is it really only if you're looking to address an issue? So if you've got a brand that's actually designed their moisturizer and serums to be used on the eye area, you don't need a separate eye cream. Yeah. And many brands are moving in that direction. But if you, some people actually quite like the eye cream set, they like a separate product. If you do like a separate product, then look for those kind of ingredients that I've just listed. And they're great for multitasking, hydrating, reducing kind of crepiness around the eyes and also helping to reduce dark circles and puffiness. And this is where it's great to bring in a little bit of that lymphatic drainage, a bit of tapping around the eye. Yeah. If you've got devices, cool, cool cubes, or even um, teaspoons that you've kept in the freezer, great for kind of massaging your eye product in. Mm, brilliant. We're coming towards the end of our time, and we could talk for hours, but um, um, if you're, uh, have, still have a question for Anita please put it in the chat we've probably got time for one or two but meanwhile Anita is there anything else um we can do to declutter my skincare routine well I think you've, you've actually got quite a good streamlined routine already so I would just make sure you kind of go back and look at it and see if any of those things we discussed are relevant to you put those things that have yeah. been that have expired or have gone past their PO date and try and look at how you can streamline things as much as possible with your new purchases but actually your routine is pretty good at the moment I would just say make sure you have more of a focus on the exfoliating steps in the night time when your skin has time to repair itself yeah. and give your barrier a little bit more nourishment in the morning. Yeah. I would say that's just the you know, slight kind of um, thing yeah. to work on. Thank you. I've got two questions. One is fake tan. Oh, anything. We've got a question in the chat. Anything specific for next? And um, we also had a question about when when you're working out, if you're running in the morning. Right. Okay, where, so, where, fake, where, so fake tan, first of all, when to do fake tan. If you're using actives, it can be quite tricky, particularly if you're tanning your face. If you're using retinoids and things, you can be more at risk of getting quite patchy results. So if you're going to fake tan, do it at night time. Don't do it in the morning, do it at night time. And actually one good strategy is to use a product um, regularly. So every day, alternate days, wash your face, apply your fake tan, do your housework, do, have your evening meal, then wash it off. So it's called short contact exposure to the tanning product. And then you do your night routine as normal. And that's a great way of getting a nice even result. And then if there are any issues in the morning, you can quickly correct them. Yeah. Um, so don't do your fake tan in the morning. It just is, often ends in a disaster. Short contact if you're using actives. If you're not using active ingredients like retinoids, then having uh, one of the gradual tanners is often a good thing to do as well. Um, they often have kind of moisturizing properties. So it's easier to integrate into your routine. Body yeah. fake tan. Um, again, I recommend you doing that at night time. It's quite good to do your shave and exfoliation the day before. So you've got a nice smooth surface to apply to. And I love, again, the gradual tanning products because they tend to give you less streaky results. Make sure you put a barrier over your knees and your ankles so you don't get kind of yeah. um, the marks yeah, so there. It's like a balmy type thing I, I put on my... Yeah, neck, um, extend your skincare down to your neck. Your necks get really neglected. So your neck benefits from exactly the same ingredients that we've just talked through, particularly the serum steps and the moisturizer steps and the sunscreen. So start looking at this whole area to treat. In terms of if you feel like your neck's gone beyond what home care can do for you, then it's good to go and see a, a specialist and get some advice. There are loads of treatments. I love a combination of things like um, radio frequency and ultrasound combined with profilo. 
Um, if you've got thick platysmal bands here, Botox can be great for that as well. So a combination of treatments usually works well, but get the basics right and make sure you're yeah. nourishing your neck skin as well. Yeah, and of course you can ask you can ask one of Dr. Anita's team in your consultation as well by emailing the um I'm just going to see if I can get that email up again events at decree.co.uk and saying that you'd like the 15 minute consultation um one quick tip for hands aging hands okay so again your hands the skin on your hands often gets neglected it's very exposed to UV every day so one quick fix is to make sure you apply your sunscreen to your hands and reapply it through the day but the skin on the hands also gets quite dehydrated it's exposed to particularly now lots of hand sanitizing and washing so make sure you always restore your skin barrier every time you wash your hands carry around a good hand cream um, and you know make sure the ceramide rich a nice thick texture hyaluronic acid glycerin vitamin e really nice ingredients to look for to help build the, the kind of the skin barrier back up again we had one question earlier about running um if you're going for if you're doing sweaty exercise in the morning what should yeah. you do beforehand and afterwards okay it depends whether you're going to do an indoor workout or outdoor if it's indoor i do recommend when you get up do a nice gentle your nice kind of light hydrating cleanse and then go about your workout. And then after you've worked out in the shower, use your nighttime cleanser, so the, the more detoxifying cleanser to remove kind of oil and sweat and debris, and then do your day routine as normal. If you are going outdoors and it is daylight hours, then after your light um, kind of cream or gel cleanser, apply your sunscreen and then do the same steps when you finish your workout. So it is quite good. That's often where people find they get breakouts because they get this really kind of hot, sweaty skin. Um, they don't remove that and then they, they, it stays on their skin all day. So it is yeah. quite good to do that gentle step free and a bit more of a, a detox yeah. fine step afterwards. Okay. Excellent. Brilliant advice. Well, thank you. Gosh, I think this has been, uh, been so full of interesting information and everybody, you'll get the recording tomorrow. I'm, I'll certainly be watching it back and taking notes. And in fact, we should write it up for um, on site on Get the Gloss because it's such a good, such a good reference. And thank you so much for going through my skincare routine. I've learned loads um, and I work in the industry and there's, you know, it's, you've, you've taught me to put, get my marker pen right on the bottom of my packaging and really kind of make sure that my skincare is, is working for me. So thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. I love talking about anything to do with skin. So I've really enjoyed myself. Oh, thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. And we'll see you at our next masterclass. Thank you. Katie says, thank you. Really insightful. Jackie, so much information. Thank you, David. Thank you. Love the products. You can apply around the eye lips too. Looking forward to trying the whole kit. Uh, was there a code to repurchase? Yes, GTG20. Um, you can get 20% off the next two weeks on the decree website um, but we'll send you the recording tomorrow with all that information so you have it thanks everyone have a great yeah. evening